Humbert, the ultimate refugee, would never have made a pass the recent terrorism and refugee-inspired checks in Europe. Some of my followers may even now be listening to this while stuck in endless airport queues. Joking aside, these are not surprising given that Italy registered almost 83,000 new migrant arrivals in the first half of 2017, with thousands more arriving every week in these peak summer months. But this is just the start, according to experts. There's going to be an explosion in the number of migrants and refugees globally over the coming decades. Dr Randolph Kent, a former United Nations official, is not alone in envisaging migration flows in the tens of millions. And, he adds, unlike the 14 million refugees that move between Pakistan and India partition, a number will have sophisticated weapons. Why is this happening? It's complex. A number of reasons, really. The weakening of the post-war global system, cyber attacks, population growth, demographic shifts, failed states, the wildfire effect of social networking, the effects of climate change, and as always, wars. The issue of migrants separates us all, but unfortunately a unified front is the only way to deal with it. There are huge problems in integration and the social order, but also huge opportunities for countries with declining working age populations. Ideas are needed, and I came across two visionary ones not so long ago. In July, former US Secretary of State John Kerry gave the 53rd annual lecture at Ditchley Park, a British think tank. The house had been a weekend home to Prime Minister Winston Churchill during World War II. It was an appropriate venue for another committed internationalist to express his ideas. Kerry called for a Marshall Plan for the 21st century. He spoke of the largest public-private partnership the world has ever seen by having the West partner with China. The Asian giant is committed to what it calls its Belt and Road policy of investing billions in the developing world to boost trade and stimulate economic growth. Kerry called for a global initiative that would release some of the 12 to 13 trillion dollars sitting in net negative interest rate accounts around the world. Rather than reacting to change, the private sector and governments need to do more to shape the future through unified action. Rooting out corruption would obviously be critical to delivering the programme, and we know that German Chancellor Angela Merkel has also been considering a Marshall Plan. The second visionary idea comes from Tolu Olubunmi and the World Economic Forum, which recognised her as one of 15 women changing the world. She co-chairs Mobile Minds, an initiative focused on remote working as an alternative to migration. This can benefit the individual, the company and the countries involved. Firstly, for talented individuals who do not want to leave home but can't find jobs, remote and mobile work are a way forward. Secondly, for companies, it means increased access to talent and cost savings. For developed countries, this is a way around the political backlash, and for developing ones, a decreased brain drain. Are we simplifying one of the most complex problems facing us? Guilty as charged, but we need ideas. To finish on a lighter note with Paddington Bear, an immigration officer might have judged that he lacked skills. After all, the sign around his neck read, Please take care of this bear. Yet if one could measure added value to the economy by the laughter of children and adult alike, or marmalade sandwiches, the naughtiest bear in the world breaks all records. Thank you for viewing, and do please subscribe to the channel if you'd like to get my monthly updates. Many thanks.